are going to replace a front strut on this 2007 Ford Freestar van. So what happened was I was out of town and I hit a curb and this already rotted out strut when it hit it collapsed like that come up through here and rested down on the tire and as you can see I never should have driven it like this but I did and you can see that the tire actually wore down in about roughly 80 miles right down to the belts of the tire it's actually well new to me it's used it came off of a uh, southern vehicle at a uh, used parts place here two of these cost me $120 Canadian <coughs> so you might have an option to do something like that get a used one we are not going to be because we're replacing the whole thing this video is not going to involve taking a spring compressor and uh, repairing the strut so just so you know ahead of time that's not going to be something we're going to do we're going to replace the whole unit The design of this strut has a pinch bolt on the steering knuckle. Here's the steering knuckle. You can see the pinch bolt in here. There is another configuration of strut assembly that is one piece. It's got like a horseshoe shape on the end and it, it bolts down into the lower control arm. Hopefully you have a, a manual, great asset if you're able to get one. These are a little more difficult to get for newer vehicles, but it uh, gives you the exact step-by-step -step procedure. If you're replacing the front struts on a car, you're going to have an easier go as far as accessing the bolts at the top of the strut. Over on our van, however, it's going to be more of a production. I'm not going to get into the details of this, but you'll have to remove this cowl See, and, and uh, I removed the windshield wipers in order to get access to the top of the strut right there. I'm over on the passenger side of the van. I'm just going to quickly show you everything we have to, to uh, remove in order to get this strut out. So obviously we'll have our top mounting uh, bolts here, three of them. Go down below, we're going to remove this nut here on the stabilizer link. We're going to remove this pinch bolt, which is at the top of the steering knuckle and literally pinches the bottom of the strut. We're going to remove our nut here at the bottom of our tie rod end. Uh, we're going to take off our front brake caliper. We are going to have to remove our two mounting bolts for the bracket of the caliper. What else we got? Our uh, nut here that goes to the drive axle. And our ball joint pinch bolt here. Everything I just showed you that we're going to remove, I have already. The caliper mounting bolts on this vehicle are 18 millimeter. You may want to, uh, if your rotor is really tight there, you might want to take a C clamp and drive your uh, brake pads back into the caliper. To I've covered that in many other videos. In this case, it's moving freely, so I know I'm not going to have any issues getting the caliper back over the rotor. This vehicle has three screws with a head 
on it like that. We'll remove those. When you go to remove that stabilizer link, you're going to run into an issue as you bolt gets off so far. You can see the bolt and the knot are both spinning. Now luckily the bolt, I shouldn't say luckily, is designed this way, has a head on it that you can put a socket like so. Now if you hold that, now you can see, see there the knot itself is turning on the bolt. So we'll just keep turning that off. Hopefully you won't run into this issue when you're releasing this link, but after I ran out of um, room to put my socket on, the nut was still protesting coming off. So what you can see I've got here is I've got stress applied with my bar behind the nut and I'm able to turn it off the rest of the way. I'm going to remove the nut on the bottom of the tie rod end here. There was a cotter pin. You can see the hole in the, in the bolt. I removed the cotter pin. And after I take this nut off, we are going to release the tie rod end with this tool and I will put a link at the bottom of the video to using this. I'm going to re remove the pinch bolt on the lower ball joint here. I have a ratchet over on the other side and I've got this one in place so that if it starts to turn this one should hit the knuckle and uh, stop the nut from turning. I also put the tie rod end here temporarily back in place just so that the steering knuckle doesn't uh, move around as I am doing this. I'm going to remove the pinch bolt between the steering knuckle and the bottom of the strut here. I will say I had a heck of a time loosening this off. I don't want to encourage you to do anything that might uh, not be recommended, but I needed some extra leverage to loosen this off. Anyway, let's get that out of there. There's no nut on the other side, so we don't have to hold it there you'll see the strut to steering knuckle pinch bolt retract from this side as I loosen it As you go along, clean these bolts up too. It'll be a lot easier when they go back in. 
I'm going to give them a spray with some lubricant too. Or I might use anti-seize on them. I just gave the strut a couple of hits with a hammer here and uh, we can see that we've loosened off between the steer knuckle and the strut. Remove the hub nut here that keeps the drive axle in place. If the uh, if it's spinning on you, you can do like I did, put a bar here, but put it on the inner side of the threads. Don't damage the outside of the threads where your uh, lug nuts for your uh, wheel rims are going to go. Take a screwdriver or a large pry bar and uh, get a little space up where those pinch bolts were. Pry them out just a bit. I ended up really having to open up that uh, pit where the pinch where the pinch bolt goes in here. Really open that up with my pry bar, and then I came under the lower control arm, and as you can see, that lower ball joint popped out. On this side of the vehicle, once the ball joint popped out. The drive axle came out very easily from the steering knuckle here. Here's the here's the drive axle back here. See how that's removed? Now on the driver's side, it did not. And I tried taking a piece of wood, beating on the end of the axle here, like this. But you don't want to come onto that too hard. So what I had to do on the driver's side was use this puller gear puller I'll put a link to that video down below this one in case you have the same issue any rate we got our at this point and be careful to this boot see what I'm doing right there I got the knuckle rest on that boot we don't want to rip that boot on that ball jacket As you can see, steering knuckle came off of the strut. We'll go up at this point and release our nuts up here. Uh, I'm not going to videotape that part. That's pretty obvious. Three nuts. Well, uh, they've already been loosened off. We'll just remove them. The old strut fell out. I should have tied that up like I did on the other side because it literally fell right down. Luckily, it didn't hit that boot that I was talking about on the end of the ball joint and rip it or anything. Keep an eye out for this. That lower ball joint with all the force that was put on it in the middle of getting it released. See this groove here? That groove is where this boot is supposed to be sitting. Now, it slipped out of that. But in this case, that doesn't matter because what I'm going to do there's no grease fitting on the bottom of this ball joint, unfortunately, so you can't lubricate it. However, I'm going to take my grease gun and put this needle unit on it. And I'm going to slip it in there. And this is a way to get a little grease because you can see this this uh, boot's pretty much got very little grease. So while I'm in, it, in here, this is the only way to do this for a unit that doesn't have any fitting on it grease fitting. So be very careful not to cut the boot. I'll slip that down and see if we can get some grease into that. I got the new strut in place. If you happen to have the luxury of having someone around to assist you to push that strut up in place, this would be a good time. 
Otherwise, you're gonna have to do some fancy footwork, literally like I did, because I had my boot down here on the bottom and I was pushing the thing up and and uh, trying to thread it into place. Anyway, I got it in there. I get like that. It just loosely at the top. We're just putting everything in place loosely at the moment. You saw where we lined up the strut with the hole for the pinch bolt here. So now we're basically just gonna reverse the whole thing. We're gonna put our pinch bolt in place, our stabilizer link, a nut for the uh, axle. I tried to kind of show that in that last video I wasn't talking about it. Just turn your axle, make sure that it's spinning inside there at the trans. I got the nut on the bottom of the tie rod end over here. Now, tighten up this bolt for the, the pinch bolt on the uh, steering knuckle to strut. Before you tighten up your uh, nut on the end of the axle, make sure you've got your washer in there. See that washer moving around there? I pry it up at the bottom of the control arm just to verify that that lower ball joint is up through the bottom of the steering knuckle, which it is. We'll put that pinch bolt in there. stabilizer link in place and the nut on that everything's all tightened up down below and now I'll just do our our uh, nuts here at the top of the strut with everything else tightened up and in place we'll put our disc back on and we'll slide the brake caliper over the rotor have your caliper bolt 
Ready? And that's it. After you've got uh, everything all installed, double check that everything is tight, and uh, that's the end of this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Whenever possible, I like to do a before and after video when I do a job on a vehicle. Sadly, because of the fact that I busted that strut completely, I couldn't do it in this case. However, uh, even before I actually hit that curve and busted the strut, the ride on this van was horrible. It was like a circus ride, a roller coaster. The new struts now, it's, uh, it's amazing the difference it's made. So hopefully I'll get a little something across here. I'm just gonna try to hit some bumps and stuff and hopefully uh, it'll kind of come through that the, uh, the ride is very nice on it now with the new struts.